Salute, salute, salute. On my lines, on my generals, on my real men. Y'all already know what it is, man. Lines and men on deck. Demon time. Because uh, those be like, I be trying to do my best to be as humble as possible, right? Even though I'm talking about things that are very violent, controversial, I get it. But I've been doing the, the best that I could to, like, try not to glorify or boast the negative energy and violence. But the sad reality is that, that was my life. And at one point in time, that was what I was doing. I was glorifying everything that had to do with violence and being, but that was because I was in prison. I was incarcerated doing double digits. So it was a point in time, I mean, throughout my whole bed, I mean, once I hit that switch, it was like I said, it was over. I hit that switch. And there's levels to this. That's not, that's not getting it misconstrued. You know, I've been very crucial on crash dummies, and dozers, like, you know, dang monsters. And explain like some dudes was hiding in the box. That's a fact, man. A lot of dudes was hiding in the box. Um, Some of them wasn't. A lot of them was though. The majority of them was. They was hiding in the box. So, because they didn't want to have no confrontations or end up bumping heads with dudes because they knew dudes was all over the state and you're going to bump heads with somebody. So I'm going to give you a perfect example of what's not a crash dummy. It's somebody that stays in the box door for a lot. And it's a bro. Salute, salute the vet. You know what I mean? Bloodline's finest. One of Bloodline's finest. LKG founder. The reason why he started that whole set is because he needed an elite squad of, of, of twins that wasn't going to fold, wasn't going to think twice. They was only going to keep their foot on the gas. So, because of that, when my brother ended up getting out the box, because he was doing like in the box on the island, I'm talking about vet. He ends up going upstate. He got a um, nice little cop-out deal, so to speak, because he had jail cases. I'll let him speak on all of that. At the end of the day, he got sent on top, right? When he got sent up north, unfortunately for him, he still was coming across bandits everywhere he went. So he gets to one medium or one max or wherever he goes. Somebody ends up pulling up that he had drama with him on the island. And Vec was that type of dude, like, I'm shooting first, I'll ask questions later. So, with that mindset, plus he's putting the nation first, with that mindset, he ended up going back to the boxing lot. Unfortunately. But it wasn't because he chose to, or he wanted to stay in the box. It was because he ended up bumping heads with dudes that he did dirty. And he's not even giving dudes the option to talk. I'm going to let him speak on this the next time I do a one-on-one -on -one with Vec. We're going we to won't touch on that. But it's my opinion, my assumption. He wasn't even really giving dudes breathing room to talk. He automatically was like, nah, like this nigga got to go. And because of that, he would go to the box. That's not a crash dummy. That's not a big monster. A crash dummy and a big monster is somebody that takes it upon themselves to get to the box and once they get to the box to stay in the box, specifically because they cannot live in population. It's like a it's like another version of PC. Cause you in your cell, nobody can get to you. You can talk all the shit that you want. And dudes was like that. It was like this. It was gangster. Like right now, we, we, we would call those dudes Troys. I mean Troy. <laughs> Trolls. They're like cell trolls, a bunch of six nines. Imagine a bunch of six nines in the box. Ha! <laughs> you want to kill these niggas the first chance you get, too. Don't get it twisted. A lot of them dudes was super fooled. But those are crash dummies. 
And there's a difference between a crash dummy and somebody that just, you know, can't avoid bumping heads with somebody that if he wouldn't have bumped heads with, he probably would have stood in population longer. Now, the way he handled those situations with them bandits maybe been different the way I would have handled it. But it still led him to go to the box for a lot of time sometimes. But, you know, that's just to give y'all uh, an example of what I'm talking about. So, let's get into it. Demon Sound. Wyoming Correctional Facility, my man. I was there from 03 to 05. Late 03. Left early 05. Mid 05. Went to the box. The way I went to the box was a movie. All the bros, we all, the whole, the whole whip, the whole whip was out, and that was at the end of it though. I'm gonna start from the beginning. In the beginning, I'm gonna talk about demon time, grimy shit. Like there was no rules and no regulations when it came to anybody that came to that facility or my house. If I didn't know you, you wasn't king. You had to earn your respect with me. Period. Like, I ain't give a fuck who you was. And if you was somebody, all right. It'll take me having conversations and being around people, seeing how the way they move in order for me to officially embrace those. So when I first got to Wyoming, I didn't give a fuck about nothing. I just came from Attica. I'm in a medium, like, what? I'm in a medium after leaving Attica? But then when I got to Wyoming, I realized Wyoming was actually worse. I mean, it's a different mindset. There was more action in Wyoming, but the action was a little bit different. That's a whole nother, that's a whole nother story. I'm gonna get into that. The difference between a max and a medium, the mindset at least. It's a, it's a, it is a big difference. But um, I'll get into that on, on something else. That's some content I got for y'all on the next one. Wyoming. I'm going to tell y'all my first movie when I was there. So I was in the house. I forget what house I was in. M2, M2, one of them fucking houses. I was in the house. And some dude was on the phone. And I had to get on the phone. And the motherfucker wouldn't get off the phone. Because at this point, you can like, you know, when you upstate, you can, and it wasn't slot time. We're not talking about the yard. Like, certain phones in the yard, some of the phones, like, <sighs> dudes was actually trying to claim, like, not, you know, like, set, like, yo, that's a king. But it wasn't really, it was different. I ain't going to lie. It was different in the medium. It wasn't dudes claiming phones like that. It was more specific time. Certain people just had to get on, and that would be an issue if we all want to get on at 8 o'clock. So, this dude... He gets on the phone. I let him get on in front of me. I'm like, yo, I'm about to get on, but I have to wait. I'm like, yo, listen. He's like, yo, I need to get on. Blah, blah. I'm like, yo, all right, go ahead, bro. Get on. I'm saying, let me get it after you. This nigga burns one click. He burns another click. He burns this nigga been on the phone for. Him. Now it's like, yo, bro, I'm about to take a shower. I got a schedule. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, yo, what are you doing? And he's like, he's just hit me with the. He hit me with the five finger. I'm like, I'm like, this snigger. And that was me being nice, bro. Me being nice. Ended up backfiring like a motherfucker. Because from me being nice, went to me being extra grimy. I'm like, whoa. So, I, I got fed up. You know what I'm saying? I ended up getting on the other phone. Because it, it was uh, somebody else that dropped the I ended up getting on the other phone. This snigga still on the phone. Now, mind you, he's somebody that came from the front in Wyoming. So he was in the front for a little minute. I don't know how long. He was in the front. Somebody that niggas know, whatever, I, I, all that Gucci shit, whatever, fine. Now he's in the back. And the back is where he's at. That's where all the shooters is really at. The, the front was like fucking, like you was in heaven. And the back was like you was in hell. So this nigga went from heaven to hell and thought shit was heaven. This motherfucker's in the pen, he in the fucking, in the, in the, in the booth, and he dubbed my shit a couple of times, but look, I even felt aggression, he's like, yo, like, he got an attitude, I'm like, this nigga got an attitude, 
This is his first day in my house, bro. I'm like, all right. So what I do? I get on the phone, the other phone. Um, He gets off the phone eventually, right? By this time, I'm at my cube already. I think I just came out the shower and all that. So I'm in my cube. I already got off the phone. I'm tight still, though. I'm still thinking about that nigga. I'm like, yo, this nigga really violated. So he come to my cube, I guess. Picked up a little vibes or whatever. I don't know who he talked to, whatever. He's like, yo, my fault, bro. He, he started telling me whatever. You know what I mean? Bunch of shit. Nah, I had to take care of this, take care of this. Ah, uh, pilot. Uh, 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 uh. I'm like, I'm like, all right. Here we go. I'm lotioning up, bro. In the back of my mind, I'm like, I'm gonna do this nigga filthy. Cause he was a big motherfucker. I ain't even gonna lie. He was bigger than me, that's for sure. Like everybody was bigger than me. I was a little ass. I was I'm not short as fuck. I ain't no midget. I'm average height, you feel me? But I've always been like a little skinny nigga. Now I got my weight up because I'm an old head. I'm older than I mean I, <laughs> I I gained weight faster. Back then, bro, I was 155 pounds, 150 pounds soaking wet. Facts. I ain't even hit 165 pounds, so I was like on my way home and I was years late, years later. So I'm tight. Because I felt like it was a pride thing. My pride got in the way, right? So, I already done came up I'm in my head. I'm like, yo, I'm going to do this nigga filthy tonight. I'm going to do him filthy. So, that's what I did. Threw the lock in the sock. <laughs> doubled up the sock. See, niggas don't even know. You got to double up that sock. Because sometimes you might have some bootleg state socks. You know what I mean? It's just like the lock might fly out. Nah, double that bitch up. Triple that bitch up. <laughs> knot it up. Late night, the CEO that's a steady, he likes going running his mouth to the other side, meaning like north side, south side. He would like go running his mouth to his partner, the CEO, the other CEO on the south side, and just leave the dorm and just have that technically like an A and B gate. The door open, which splits the, out, the north side from the south side open. So that's what that CEO does. He's a steady. He's a steady. He goes over there to the other side. The minute that nigga went to the other side, bro, I was like this on the floor, my long johns, cause he was like actually he was in the in the day room. He was in the day room, and he was talking with the other CEO when I was creeping on the floor, <laughs> like a motherfucking Navy SEAL. It was real talk. I'm creeping on the floor, cause I'm trying to get to the other side where that dude is sleeping at. You know what I'm saying? And he's sleeping in a double bunk, bottom bunk, because he's a big nigga, so he can't be on the top bunk. They used to give them niggas that type of benefit. Like, you was too fucking fat or too big. You couldn't you couldn't be on the top bunk. You'd be on the bottom bunk. So he was in another, on the other side. And I had to cross the side. So police, right there, while I'm crawling, on the floor, like a ninja. And then, coincidentally, these two police niggas go into the, um, the microwave every year where they got like a little CO spot where they go heat their little fucking food up and all that shit. They go in there. And once they go in there, I fly across the motherfucking gallery. The walkway. I'm not crawling now. I'm on my feet because the police is gone. I could just, it's, the only reason why I was on my tummy is because they could see you through the middle. When I got to pass to the other side. Once they went into the little, they little, um, a little fucking area where they got their little microwave and all that shit that's went right across. Son snoring. I'm looking at this nigga for like a good hot not even a minute but a good hot 30 seconds. And I just start whipping his ass with that shit, bro. Like I woke that nigga the fuck up, knocked him out, woke him up again. I whipped that nigga ass so bad with that motherfucking lock and sock that his bunkie that was on the top bunk is the one that blew up the spot because this nigga couldn't even talk. I was on his ass so much. Just caught him. Wah, 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 wah. He was up, sleep, up, sleep. I knocked that nigga out and woke him up 20 times, bro. Beat the brakes off this nigga. The bunkie, the bunkie is thinking... 
Because I woke him out of his sleep. He wakes up. Like, yo, stop. Stop scream. I got to look at this nigga. Like, nigga, shut the fuck up. Ain't nobody doing nothing to you, nigga. Shut the fuck up. I ain't hitting you, nigga. I got the fucking sock in my hand. Blood on all that shit. I don't busted this nigga whole fucking face open. And because of the bunkie, CO's is getting on point. But guess what? Nigga, I'm sliding like a ninja on my stomach across the floor. <laughs> I'm on the floor, bro. They hit the lights and everything. Real talk. Bop, 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 bop. The police coming because now I got hot. The nigga got scared. I bark on him. We loud. Nigga, I popped off on this nigga like around. I want to say like one in the morning. The police hit the lights because he hear the screaming. I'm on the floor. All the way away from my bed. My bed is on the whole opposite direction, my nigga. Check how real, yo, check, check, check this shit out. Dudes that's in the house that know me already. They see me on the floor crawling. The CEOs can't see me because the positions is blocking me. And they all going towards the noise. And Duke is now, Duke is bleeding, leaking all over the place. I don't... Bust that nigga nose open, fucked his mouth up. I fucked him up. I fucked him up real right. And the CO's now is on the walkie. I got dudes is waking up now. Everybody's waking up because the lights is on. Niggas like, and they see me on the floor. Some dudes are like, and they're like, yo, two go like this. I got niggas like this. Yo, hold on, wait. Because police is coming in. And I'm on the floor, niggas still. On the whole other side where this nigga leaking. My bed is on the whole other side. I got a corner cube. I got to get to the whole other corner. I got niggas like, yo, hold on, Chulo. And I'm on the floor like this. Yo, let me know, let me know. <laughs> and then they're like, go ahead, go. I'm on the floor like this on my belly, bro. Thank God them fucking floors used to be buff like a motherfucker. I'm over here sliding like the Matrix. <laughs> Can't make this shit up, twin. Yeah. That's demon time, man. I got away with that. I made it all the way back to my fucking cube on my stomach, sliding on the floor. Half the niggas in the house see me on the floor. And they're like, yo, go ahead. They're like, looking out for me. Because the police is so focused on this nigga. And the police is acting nervous. They're like, what the fuck happened? Hit the pin eventually. By that time, my ass is right back up in my bed. Like nothing ever happened, nigga. And that's just one movie. That's my first movie. In Wyoming. My first. My first. Definitely not my last. Lines in, man. Y'all already know what it is. Salute.